الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله اللهم اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Brothers and sisters, I'd like to start the khutbah by asking a weird question. How do you feel coming to Jum'ah every week? Just take a moment there and think about this. How do you feel? Do you feel it's an obligation that you just have to come and do? It's unfulfilling. It's something that I just have to do out of culture, habit. How do you feel coming to Jum'ah? every single week. The Prophet ﷺ said, That deeds are based on their intentions and people will get what they intend. And so what is your intention coming to Jum'ah every week? What is your intention coming to Jum'ah today? And when you think about this, there's many intentions. But are we conscious of them? And when I like to think about intentions, I like to break it down to two things. It helps me at least personally. One is why are you doing the action? And number two, what reward do you want to get and from who? So why did you come to Jum'ah? I think many of us can articulate why they came to Jum'ah. And starting with why and understanding the reason why we do things, that's something very common in our lives. We use it at work, we use it with our kids. Why did you do that? Tell me the reason and so forth. But I want to talk about the second dimension for just a little bit more. What reward do you want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And are you actually able to visualize a reward that you want? And let me give you an example. I actually, as I was preparing for the khutbah, I said, okay, what are rewards we can get from coming to Jummah? And I forced myself to come up with at least 10. And we can start by saying, we're going to come and we're going to meet people at Jummah, inshallah, we smile to them. I want, Ya Allah, from you a reward for everyone that I smile to. Because a smile is a sadaq. I'm going to shake people's hands after salah. And I'm starting with the small things. I want for every Muslim that I shake their hand, and this is from a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our sins drop just by shaking people's hand. We're going to be praying in jama'ah in 30 minutes. I want 27 the rewards, 27 times the reward than if I were just praying at home. We're populating the house of Allah. إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُ مَسَاجِدَ Allah. Populating the house of Allah is something desired by Allah and Allah will reward us on that. I want that reward. As we pray, we're going to listen to the words of Allah. I want for every letter that I listen to a reward, Ya Allah, from you. As we're talking right now here, there are angels surrounding us asking for our forgiveness. Ya Allah, I want the angels to ask for my forgiveness because I did a lot of sins. I want you, Ya Allah, to remove all the sins that I did in this past week. I want you, Ya Allah, to remember me and to mention my name in the heavens just like I am mentioning your name in this world right now. And Ya Allah, I want you to give me, I want you to give me this moment of reward from a you where my heart comes closer to you. These are ten Rewards that I just brainstormed coming to Jum'ah. Are we conscious and can we visualize these rewards versus just I'm coming to Jum'ah because I don't want to be punished from Allah because I know my parents told me growing up coming to Jum'ah is an obligation. If that's our consciousness, if that's our intent that I am coming to fulfill an obligation and that's it, we start building a relationship of fear with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why am I here? Not to be punished. 
So I'll get through it, I'll get through the 30 minutes and the parking and the walking and all that and then I'm leaving. Where's my heart? But if I'm coming with the intent to receive all these rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you build a different relationship. You build a relationship of hope, of desire, of servitude. Ya Allah, I am sitting here and I want something from you. And by the way, this relationship to want from Allah is at the core of Islam. It's at the core of la ilaha illallah. It's at the core of acknowledging that you are a servant and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the God. That's at the core of it. That I can't give myself all these rewards. I need it from you. And it builds a relationship of positivity with Allah. A perspective of even though coming to Jum'ah, as simple as it may be, we have to leave our works, we have to drive in, we have to park for our way, we have to walk, we have to crowd, and if you can come forward, we can make more room for those who are crowded in the back right now. Please, come forward. But all of these things that we have to go through, sometimes the khutbah is good, sometimes the khutbah is bad, forgive me. But we have to go through all of this, for what? For an obligation? Okay. That creates an a, a, a unfulfillment in our hearts versus a desire to come every Friday and meet the Muslimin and meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have a relationship. And this idea of being hopeful with Allah is one of the most beautiful gifts that we can have from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be hopeful of Allah. I want to tell you a personal story, and I was debating to tell you this or not, but I will share this personal story with you. 14, 15 years ago, I was in a um, leadership retreat. It was a three-day leadership retreat. Those things are extremely exhausting. You're up for 10, 12 hours a day. You're constantly thinking, brainstorming, working. This was back when I was living in Washington, D.C. We had people come in from all over the U.S. And after three days, you are exhausted. So as the host, because I was living in the host city, I'm sitting in the hotel lobby. So we had rented a, a meeting room in a hotel. I'm sitting in the hotel lobby exhausted, visually exhausted. And just waiting for people to pack their bags and leave and just be a good host. And as I'm sitting there, a old lady comes up to me with the hotel um, sort of uniform, right? And she says, come. I'm like, come where? She said, come, come. She was an old Chinese lady, very little English, I remember vividly. And she said, come with me. I'm like, okay. So I get up, I walk with her, she takes me back to the meeting room that we were meeting in. We had cleaned our stuff, but you usually leave the tables and chairs, and it's typical that hotel staff would, would put them and store them. And she's like, clean. I'm like, clean what? She's like, clean the room. I'm like, that's not my job, that's your job. And she's insistent. She's looking at me, a very sharp look, and she's like, clean. And brothers and sisters, this frustration starts to build inside of me, and I'm I'm getting very angry at this point. I'm exhausted, I'm frustrated, it's not my job. And she's looking, like, clean. And I try to reason with her, there's nothing. It, it's, communication is not happening. And so, out of my frustration, I just start, like, getting the tables, folding them, folding the chairs, and putting them in storage, and I am boiling. And I'm thinking, what am I going to do after this? I'm going to go talk to the manager. I'm going to go complain. And subhanAllah, I had this moment as I was frustrated. Why am I so frustrated? And I tell myself, you know what? What is my intention right now? This is the, the scenario going on in my head. And I tell myself, I can't find an intention. I am so angry. I'm just like, I'm doing it. And I tell myself, no, find an intention. And as I'm, this is all in my head, I tell myself, you know what? Here's my intention. I want to do something good above and beyond what is expected and 
hopefully she will know that I'm Muslim and associate this back to, to Muslims. This was right after, like two years after 9-11, all that kind of stuff is still on my mind. And I'm telling myself as I'm doing all this, like how is she gonna know I'm Muslim? I'm, I'm like doubting myself even as I'm coming up with the intention. And brothers and sisters, as I'm folding the table, putting it back in storage and turning, she looks at me and she points and she says, Muslim man, very good. I'm like, Allahu Akbar, insi wa lajin. I froze. I'm just looking at her, I was like, what did you say? She's like, Muslim man, very good. I'm like, uh-huh. And she points at me and she says, God told you to do this. I'm like, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> and in that moment, my whole demeanor changes. I am packing those chairs, those tables, I am putting them, we're talking about Muslims in China, she doesn't understand me, I don't understand her, but we're, 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 it's a whole different experience. And it's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing me, five minutes later she says, we're done. And I'm like, no we're not done, I am finishing this room. And subhanAllah, the lesson I want to share with you, Intentions have the power to change your perspective. There's a beautiful quote. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And this changed for me from being a very frustrating task that I couldn't wait to go and complain and, and be angry about to something I am doing with pleasure and joy. And it was subhanAllah, Allah gave me a beautiful sign. And He never give it, given me that again in, in my whole life from that point. But Allah wanted to teach me a lesson in that point. That don't worry about the result of the intention. Your job is to gather a good intention. That's it. Because I remember in my head, I am challenging even coming up with intention. How is she going to know I'm Muslim? And Allah is just like, that's not your role. That's my role. The reward is from Allah. And so I share this story with you because subhanAllah, you may never have that immediate response from Allah experience, but I feel it's a responsibility to share it. It is real. It is very real, but it's up to us to take that moment and understand what our intention is. So when you're feeling frustrated, when you're feeling unfulfilled, when you're feeling not happy, ask yourself, what is my intention? Am I conscious of it? I want to go back to the hadith for a minute. The hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that most books of hadith start with. It's like foundational to Islam. إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مَا and I want you to understand it from a slightly different perspective that the scholars talked about, which is, it's not that every deed is based on, their, on its intention, it's every deed, every action already has an intention. Every deed already has an intention and you will get whatever you intended. And then Rasulullah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes and explains فَمَنْ كَانَ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُهُ Whoever is migrating for the sake of Allah, so he will get that reward. And whoever is migrating so that he can marry a woman, like build a family, or get some worldly business out of it, then he'll get that. I want you to take a moment and, and really reflect, who is Rasulullah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talking to here? He is talking to the muhajireen, the people that migrated left everything behind, left their lives behind, left everything behind, and went to Medina to start a new life with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is telling them and reminding them, go back and look back at your intention. Because many of us do actions and we are not even conscious of our intention. These people made hijrah. These people made hijrah to Medina already. They went through the hardship. And Rasulullah is reminding them, go back and think, why did you do this action? If you did it for worldly matters, that's what you'll get. But if you did it for Allah, 
and his messenger, then be patient. And know that there will be hardships along the way. And that's how we get through life. This notion of consciousness. In the corporate world where I spend most of my day, there's a, there's a huge trend right now. It started with Google. It's called mindfulness. Anyone heard of it? Mindfulness at the workplace? Right? So mindfulness is this idea that most people at work are not actually even conscious of what they're doing. They're just doing. They're in constant motion. But this whole notion of mindfulness is the, the basic human ability to be fully present, aware of what you're doing, and not be reactive or overwhelmed. And not be reactive or overwhelmed. And I look at this subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is baked into our religion. This is baked into the way of life that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa gave us. And if we are not conscious of our intention, brothers and sisters, we are literally wasting our life. Literally. Think about 80% of your day. How conscious of, are you of what you're actually doing and what reward you want from Allah for that action? Versus what reward I want from HR or my payroll or work or this or that or my wife or my kids. It's not about that. You will get whatever you want it. But if you want the reward from Allah, then there's a journey to do that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ The most valuable resource Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is time. And if most of our day goes away without a conscious state of mind, without an intent on why we're doing it, that is a waste. You will be a loser. I'm not saying this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this. Except for those who believe. Believe in who? Allah. That Allah will give them the reward. And then do the good deeds. Based on those intentions. And that's how we make our life. It, it reminds me of like someone going to work but not punching in or not putting the time in the timesheet. You worked, but you didn't get any reward. Part of this is the pace of our life. We're going too fast. SubhanAllah, we're, all, we're connected. Look, in, in our pockets, most of us here in this room, we have a computer that can connect us to anywhere, any person around the world. There's no downtime. So when you think about the, the Prophet ﷺ and the companions, they were described as tukar nawaya, businessmen of intentions. And a businessman knows, I won't let a good opportunity go by. So they actually used to like, and like there's many stories about this, but if someone were to say, hey, come on, let's go, we're gonna go follow a funeral procession or something. They would actually say, give me a second. They would pause, think, say, okay, I'm ready now. Wait, what, what are we doing? I was gathering, I was becoming conscious. I was actually creating this, this in my frontal lobe here, this presence of I am gonna go and do this action, not because you told me, but because I want this reward from Allah subhanahu. And they didn't pick one intention, they picked many. Many intentions. And so, if we are constantly on the phone, checking email, talking to people, and Allah knows I am the first one that needs this khutbah. But this is a reminder for myself and for all of us. You won't create those moments of pause in your life if you are always busy. I was looking into mindfulness practices and subhanAllah, this idea of relaxing and intensely focusing, I'm like, we have that, it's called salah, it's five times a day. And if we do actually proper wudu, proper wudu can be one of the greatest forms of actual meditation before you go into salah. Not something that we're splashing water all over and then just going in. 
So we have these things baked in so that we don't make our, wi- our life a big waste of time. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا. In two weeks, Ramadan is coming. Inshallah. And Ramadan is one of the most amazing months to practice consciousness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That we have prescribed fasting upon you like we prescribed it upon the previous nations so that you can gain a state of taqwa, consciousness. Consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even if you do Ramadan wrong, you're just fasting and not eating and drinking, but you're, you're doing, your life is everything else it used to be, you are still in a higher state of consciousness. Because those habits of drinking coffee in the morning, grabbing lunch, when you stop, why am I not doing those? What's different about my day? You are thinking. You're not just in the flow and the routine and the habits of the day to day. And those are great opportunities. 30 days to train ourselves again to pause and think about why we are doing things. And I want to start with Ramadan itself. What is our intent for Ramadan? Because we all love Ramadan, but let's be honest, some of us feel Ramadan is a bit of a burden. We have to change our day-to-day routine. I'm standing in prayers longer. I'm eating less. And I have to fast 16, 17 hours a day. It can be, can be daunting for people. And it's taboo to say, I'm not excited about Ramadan. Everyone has to, a Muslim has to be excited about Ramadan. And if you're feeling that way, I invite you to renew your intention. Why are you fasting Ramadan in the first place? Is it again just, it's an obligation, I gotta get it over with? Or is it an opportunity? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves nothing more than what He has prescribed as mandatory upon us. And if you want that love from Allah, and I believe everyone wants that love from Allah, then we are fasting so that we can attain that love from Allah. What reward do you want in return? Number one, ask Allah to wash away all your sins because Allah promised that. That between Ramadan and Ramadan and whoever fasts Ramadan, Iman and Wahtisab, with belief. And Ihtisab here is what? Is this is the reward I want from Allah. It's Istihdar al Niyyah, it's Ihtisab al Aj. It's being conscious of what you want in return. And by the way, we are like that in every other thing in our life. When we do things, we are very conscious. I'm doing this because I want this. If you do, if you fast Ramadan like that, your sins are washed away. That's a good intent. That's a beautiful reward. No one else can give you but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, multiplying your deeds. Every deed we do in Ramadan is multiplied by 70. Brothers and sisters, that's a huge opportunity. Massive opportunity. We can work that one month on overdrive, less sleep, more intense, more intensity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and inshallah gather so many rewards that will help us compensate for all the sins we do the rest of the year. And if we do that, and here's the third reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we may be one of the lucky winners because every night in Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala picks people that He says, congratulations, you're not going to hellfire. You're going to Jannah. Every night. Every single night in Ramadan. 
So those are intentions that change the way we can look at Ramadan. And even if it gets hard and tiring, just remember these intentions. I'll leave you with this. Something practical to think about. Let's not go gung-ho here after the khutbah and like, I want an intention for every moment of my life. You'll fail in two weeks. But pick two or three things that constitute most of your day. If you work, if you can actually sit, pause, meditate, think, what is a good intent for me going to work? Why am I doing it? What reward do I want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And like brainstorm 15, 20 and write it down. Put it somewhere where you can see it. Inshallah, that intent carries with you eight, nine hours a day. If you're a mother, do the same. If you're a student, do the same. Pause, think, stop, create a relationship of desire with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do you want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I'm going to end the khutbah now and we're going to pray. And let's practice this right now. What intent do you have for the salah that we're about to do? What reward do you want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this salah? So again, it's not a, just a mindless act. Between salawat, Allah washes away sins. Nothing is more beloved to Allah than getting close to Him through salah. So my request is take a minute, pause, and remember, this is not a life that is to eternity. We will die. And when we die, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at every minute of every day. And we look, what was your intent? What did you want in reward? And inshallah, if you have that intention, Allah is the most gracious, the most merciful. He will grant you that reward. We're going to make dua for the sick. And again, as you make dua, what is your intent? If you make dua for someone, the malaika around you will say, وَلَكَ مِثْلُهُ You get the same dua that you make. So if you're making a uh, whatever dua, that's what you'll get. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal the sick sister Zinath Kurdi and her son, brother Zafar Ahmed who's suffering from leukemia, Jamal Dahra, Abdul Razak Dahra, Harun Hussein, and Taj Muhammad. اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا رقها وجلها ما علمنا منها وما لم نعلم اللهم يا ربنا رزقنا الفردوس الأعلى Oh Allah grant us the highest level of Jannah الفردوس الأعلى and all the actions necessary to get us there Oh Allah بلغنا رمضان Oh Allah بلغنا رمضان Make us from those who Allah السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله